Hi everyone. I've stepped you through assembly, annotation, comparing protein families, building trees in Patrick, and there's a lot of clicking involved and a lot of analysis steps. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to a pretty new service that we launched that's really popular with our users called the Comprehensive Genome Analysis Service. It's a streamlined analysis meta service that accepts raw reads or contigs, and it performs a comprehensive analysis that includes assembly, or not if you just submit contigs, annotation, it'll identify the nearest neighbor to the genome, and it'll perform a comprehensive analysis that includes a subsystem summary, a phylogenetic tree, and features that distinguish the genome from its nearest neighbors. So let's first, in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to submit um, one that uses reads, read files. If you looked at other videos I've done, especially for assembly, I've gone into great detail about how you can load your own read files into Patrick. You could use the text box to start typing and search for read files that are already in your workspace. If you loaded them recently, you could click this down arrow here and it would show you the most recent read files that were loaded all the way back. You notice that the ends are FASTQ or FASTQGZ, which are zipped files. So Patrick accepts both of those. Single read would be the same thing. There are read files uh, that are FASTQ or FASTQGZ. You can also, if you don't, if you haven't uploaded it into Patrick yet, you can click the folder icon here and you can upload data. You can either search for data in your workspace or you could up click this upload icon here and that would open a window, well first it opens another pop-up window that tells you the endings that are needed for these files for it to be acceptable for the Comprehensive Genome Analysis Service. And then you click Select File and that will open a dialog window with your computer. So if you've had uh, a genome sequenced at your assembly service, they gave you the files, this is a way you can get that but we're not going to do that today because I've gone over in great detail how to do this in my other assembly videos. Today we're going to talk about loading data from the sequence read archive. Now I decided to get um, some files that were done by the FDA. There's some a great resource right now, FDA Argos, where they're doing all of these reference grade microbial genomes. So I found at the sequence read archive, I found, um, I wanted to try a hybrid assembly which combines short and long reads. And I found a particular file that does that from Staph Aureus. And if I were to click on one of these, I've already clicked on all of them here. This is what opens up at the sequence read archive got the experiment number. But this is the run number. Patrick needs this run number. So I mouse over it, I copy it, and I go back here to the comprehensive genome analysis page, and I enter that run number in this text box. But I got to get it over into the selected libraries box. To do that, I click on this arrow and move it over. And you notice a little pop-up message occurred that said, oh, um, we're validating, making sure that that number's correct. This will, this is just for um, Patrick's benefit to make sure you've entered in the right number. Now, what we used to do is make you go to SRA, download it. In fact, at one point, I think I had a tutorial showing you how I'd locate the files at SRA, which was easier to search but then I would go to the European Nucleotide Association, ENA, to download the data because their download was easier because I'm just a biologist, I'm not a computer scientist. 
So I have to do things the, the harder way. Now all of that has been skipped so that you can just enter the number here and Patrick does it for you. What could be better than that? So we've got one number in, but we need a few more to go. So I need this SRR number for the second one. The first one was the long reads. These are the short reads, so I just overwrite that with this guy and move it over and look for the message right here, validating that number. And quickly enough, it says, yeah, it's okay, we can do that. And then there was a third uh, file related to this one genome with a uh, different run on the Illumina HiSeq 2500. So I go here, put that little guy in there and move it over. And I've got three, but wait, we're not done yet. Okay, because remember this is a combination. It's doing assembly and annotation all on the same page. We have to choose an assembler and we have to choose taxonomy. So there's some parameters that we have to fill out. There are a number of strategies that we offer in Patrick. Auto, unicycler, spades, canoe, metaspades, plasmid spades, and MDA single cell. Let's start with unicycler. I'll discuss auto at the end. Unicycler can use both long and short reads. It generally takes a longer time, but it does a really good job. And what it'll do is it'll take the long reads and then improve, not polish, but bring on the short reads to improve the assembly. So that's an important distinction between unicycler and canoe. Canoe also will take long and short reads, but it first builds the initial assembly with the long reads and then it polishes it with the short reads. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Spades takes only short reads and there are several you know, variations of spades. Metaspades for metagenomic reads, plasmid spades if you've sequenced a plasmid, or MDA. What's gaining in popularity is people isolating single cells and generating an assembly from that. So MDA does that. So what happens if you pick auto? Okay, if you pick auto and you have only long reads, it's gonna do canoe. If you have both long and short reads, it's gonna pick unicycler. And if you only have short reads, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna pick unicycler. So I've actually generated this assembly before, but I did it with the unicycler. This time I wanna try something different and I'm gonna click canoe. And notice that when I click canoe, it tells me I have to estimate the genome size. Yikes. Luckily, I've estimated this before. I've run it before so I know what it is. It might be a little bit daunting if I didn't. Well, it doesn't like the comma. But it wasn't 5, 000, or 5 million, it's 3 million reads. Um, or the size, the end size of that genome. If you didn't know that, I just go look at other Staph aureus genomes and give it some ballpark, maybe a little bit bigger and see what happens. Trimming, do you wanna trim or not before the assembly? Trimming uses trim galore. Um, I'm sure these things have been trimmed. And then you see this thing, uh, rack on inter iterations and pylon iterations. What are those things? Those are what we call polishing the genome. So what it'll do is build the original, the first assembly, and then if you have a, polish, a polishing step, it'll go through and take the reads and try to improve in areas, make sure that it's called, that there's not some discrepancy in the reads for individual locations. So it's using the short reads, or I guess long reads, to do that. Um, uh, so those are two other options you can take. So this, we have it set at two for each, and I did some searching on this before, and generally, uh, at least at BioStars, they thought that two uh, polishing iterations were good. 
Now recon is for long reads, pylon is for short reads, so we're asking it to do both. Now you can also um, adjust the contact length and the contact coverage. Generally, GenBank has um, requirements that, as I recall, that they only accept contigs of 300 base pairs or longer. So you can mess with this and change that, and the coverage you can change too if you want. But let's just set it at the, at the default parameters. Bacteria is the domain. If I were to click down here, you'd see I could do archaea or viruses. Right now, viruses is just for bacteriophages, not for anything else. But since we've recently joined forces with Viper, the viral BRC, eventually we will have a virus annotation service. So let's click bacteria. We need to do a taxonomic name. I know that this genus is staph, Staphylococcus aureus. So you notice it started to giving me designations. This is the one I want, which is the species level. And now I have to give it a unique identifier. I'm gonna give it one of these SRR numbers, just so I can remember who it's from. And then I'm gonna put a tag on it that it was canoe. So I've got that. And then I have to put it in an, out, an output folder. If you've created a folder before, you can start typing it here. You could go in and look at your workspace here, clicking here to find folders that you've created. And I know I have one in here for comprehensive genome analysis. So I'm gonna click on that one, Let's say okay. And now look, the blue button's ready. I can submit this job. So I'm going to submit this. Now in the later videos, I'm going to show you how to submit assembled context and then we're going to talk about the files that come with the comprehensive um, genome analysis job and also how you find help when you have problems. So let's cl click on submit. I get an analysis that's, or an analysis, a dialog box that says it was being prepared and now it's been queued. And down here on my jobs, uh, jobs monitor, you can see that it's already running. So the next one, we're going to submit a job with assembled context. Thanks.